Hey, y'all. Welcome. Welcome back to Artistic License at the Theater. My name is Karen, and um, today we're going to do a little bit of whatever we want. That's what we do here on Artistic License. And um, we're going to start out with finishing up Riven. Um, and then we're probably, that's probably not going to take a full two hours, even with all the alternate endings and stuff. So after that, we're going to go and see if we can beat any more of the mon- the optional bosses in um, Final Fantasy X. We were on that original creation that was like an Earth Eater. So maybe we'll do some of that this stream. We'll see how it goes. Welcome in, Koneko, by the way. I see you got first. Happy Thursday. It's always going to be a good Thursday when Koneko gets first on the stream. Um, I do have Riri in here with me. You can see Riri Booty right there. Um, She is still not doing well. And um, so if we have crying in the background, I'm so, so sorry. Um, It's unfortunately not something we can really control. It looks like my voice is a little quiet. I'm going to I'm going to turn that up a little bit. Okay, that looks a little better. All right, you guys. So as you know, we like to start out the stream with a personality quiz. So today we are going to do, boop, what fictional man could you fix? I feel like we could fix Gin. You know, I feel like we could fix him. Um, He's absolutely super problematic, but I feel like we could fix him. I forgot today was Thursday until like an hour before stream. I thought it was Wednesday. Vacation brain is real. Vacation brain is so real, Koneko. Oh my God. I do that all the time. Anytime I take days off, my whole week gets jacked up. And then it's like, I do not know. It is a mystery. (laughs) So I don't blame you. I don't blame you at all. How has your vacation been, by the way? Um, Being an RP who writes tons of problematic characters, I can fix all of them. That's right. You can fix them with your words, Koneko. All right, let's get started. All right. Do you want to fix him? Yes. I want to make him worse. Oh, I like that answer. I could fix him, but whatever's going on with him is so much funnier. <laughs> I want to help him commit atrocities. He will fix himself if he knows what's good for him. Oh, I I could fix him, but whatever is going on with him is so much funner. Okay. Choose one of my favorite romance tropes, Beauty and the Beast. I like that one. Character A confesses their love for character B, even though they know their love isn't returned, not because they're trying to get something out of it, but because they need character B to know how they feel just once. Um, Confident flirt plus socially awkward nerd. Two characters are drawn together because of their shared ideals, but are pulled apart because they differ on how to make those ideals a reality. Oh, that's a good one. Happy to die at each other's side. Definitely going with Beauty and the Beast for me. Um, Latest RP Muse is quite literally pure evil, unhinged villain. I love him. I love him already too, Koneko. I don't even know who he is. But I love him already. Which of the following were you most likely to do when playing Zoo Tycoon? I love Zoo Tycoon. Uh, name the animals after characters from whatever book series you're obsessed with at the time. Definitely did that. Seal off the exits and let the T-Rexes loose. Uh, yeah, definitely done that before. Actually played the game the way you're supposed to. Build lots of accessible exhibits with happy animals. Added lots of benches and restaurants for the guests. If you could have gotten... A, an A in Zoo Tycoon, you would have. Wow. <laughs> Fail to get rid of your predator animal's male offspring when they grow up so one of them eventually challenges their father and wins. And then you have a rib cage called Grizzly Pear 2 or whatever just sitting in the exhibit and you just don't get rid of it for some reason even though you easily could. <laughs> this person has obviously played Zoo Tycoon, the original, because that shit would happen. Okay, that shit would happen. Run out of money. Actually, this is the real answer. This is the real answer. <laughs> um, but this is actually probably most often true for me. Um, the two characters being pulled apart trope is literally the plot of the game I just finished playing. Oh, yes. Hell yes, Koneko. Okay. Choose a love confession scene that makes me vomit blood. Wow. Hey, Karen Gale. How's it going? Happy to have you here. We're doing our quiz at the beginning. All right. Um, Spikes, you're the one speech from Buffy the Vampire Slayer. I guess this is vomit blood. Do we hate this or do we love it? Is it like vomit blood dramatic or is it like vomit blood? I hate it. Oh, kitty, you have to tell me what you get. And welcome in, by the way. Happy Thursday. The whatever our souls are made of, his and mine are the same scene from Wuthering Heights. Oh, yeah, that one is kind of barfy. Um, the I don't deserve someone like you, but if I ever could, I swear I would love you for the rest of my life scene from Groundhog Day. Whatever. That's cute. Birdles, hi, welcome back. How's it going? Could be better, could be worse. I feel that. I know what you mean. You're the only man that's ever touched me. The only one from Moonlight. Never saw Moonlight. I do love nothing in the world so well as you. Is that not strange for much ado about nothing? If I were not myself, but the handsomest, cleverest, best man in the world. And if I were free, I would be on my knees a minute and beg your hand in love from War and Peace. 
I'm in love with you. I'm really sorry. That's weird for you to hear, but I just need you to hear it from the office. Okay, so am I supposed to be voting for like which one I hate the most out of these or the ones I've seen at least? Okay, I'm just going to go be a space pirate. Oh, I love that for you. Good luck on your space pirate career. I hope it goes well. Um, Wuthering Heights, definitely hate. Big hate for that. Okay, choose a song from the AMV Hall of Fame. Oh, man. I, I, a millennial definitely made this. Okay, this does not have Zoomer energy. I'm so here. Angel with a Shotgun by Cab. Iris by the Goo Goo Dolls. Hell yes. Bring Me to Life by Evanescence. Skater Boy by Avril Lavigne. Numb by Linkin Park. Every Time We Touch by Cascada. Numb by Linkin Park. Oh, yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. Any Nightwish song ever erasure. <laughs> that is so true. That is so true, Koineko. <laughs> I'm about to be a space vampire. Oh, sweet. Oh, vampire. A space vampire. It says space vampire pirate. That sounds amazing. I want that life. Choose a girl from a book. There's a lot of options for this one. Oh, my gosh. I'm not reading all of these out loud. Why are there so many? Oh, Eowyn's on here. That's cool. Katniss. Jane Eyre. Okay, Alice. Rosalind from As You Like It. Oh, my God. There's, like, way too many. We're going to choose, Um, I don't know, Eowyn. Whatever. I am no man. That's nice. Okay, Eowyn. Spike Spiegel, Kitty, you got Spike Spiegel? Uh, okay, we have to pause and read this. If you're wondering why there aren't more anime men on here, it's because I've only seen like four anime ever in my entire life, and this is one of them anyways. He's undeniably needs to be fixed, but is allergic to moving forward in any capacity, so fixing him would be like unstoppable force meets a movable object. I would happily fix him. Me too, Kitty. <laughs> We're playing Destiny 2. The season is about pirates. Oh, sweet. Okay, it's about... The yearning, the vibes, the inherent sadness, the horrors, the intense loneliness. It's about the vibes, baby. It's about the vibes. Okay, art. What art are we choosing? Um, let's see. Do we want... Okay, no, we're going with this one. They killing him. They killing him good. Let's do it. Okay. Choose an unhinged girl. Okay, we've got Laura Palmer. I probably don't even need to read the rest. Catherine Earnshaw, Elaine from The Love Witch. Amber Cullen, Jennifer Check, Claire White. Yeah, Laura Palmer. Okay, choose a pop girly. Okay, uh, we've got Lana Del Rey, Marina, Carly Rae Jepsen, Rena, Charlie, FKA Twigs. We're going with Marina. Marina, yes. Which type of fictional man are you most likely to be insane about? Emo, pathetic loser. He's literally just some guy. Doomed from the start, war criminal. Um, The emo. Definitely love the emo. Pathetic loser is close second, like a really close second, but love the emo. What's the most important thing to remember? The love was there. It didn't change anything. It didn't save anything, but the love was there. Violence makes violence makes nothing much at all. We're like that. You can never go home again. Not really. A thing must be loved before it is lovable. Power doesn't corrupt. Power reveals. When someone has enough power to do what they've always wanted, you see what they've always wanted to do. That is actually very important to remember. I agree. Um, I know none of the unhinged girls. Pick Laura Palmer. Um, Doom from the start and War Criminal literally describe all my muses. Hell yeah, Koneko. I picked way different answers. I'm excited to see what you get. I'm excited to see what I get too. Okay. Oh, we're at 12 out of 12. We're about to say. Okay. Next. I got, oh my God, I got the Battenson. I got Robert Battenson. He's pathetic. He's insane. He's a loser. He's the love of my life. It's true. I thoroughly enjoyed that movie, by the way. there was It was like really... It was really polarizing for people. Amazing Batman interpretation. I'm here for it. I loved the Riddler. I mean, yeah, it was Riddler. Yeah, Riddler interpretation. It was good. That was a good movie, you guys. That's a good movie. Tom Wamskin. Honestly, this might be pretty easy to fix. Just take him back to his natural habitat of Minnesota and let nature do the rest. Literally no idea what the fuck even is this. <laughs> That's a good answer, Koneko. <laughs> let nature do the rest. Oh, the literally no idea. Oh, I see. That was a totally different message. Something in the way. Yeah, I don't know who that is. Let's see. Tom Wamskin. Who is that? Tom Wamskin. Oh, is this from Succession? I've not seen it. I've not seen it. It's about rich people being awful. That's all I know, but I've never watched it. Um, I assume he's awful, but from the description, it sounds like maybe he's the least awful. I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, love my answer. Very happy about it. <laughs> All right, you guys. It's time to play the game. 
I just lost the game. He plays Mr. Darcy. I love Mr. Darcy. That's why everyone loves him, that hand flex. Oh. Okay. All right, guys. Boop, time for Riven. Let's start the saved game. Yes, we're going to load game. We're going to load Steam 2. All right. Are you guys ready to see some endings for this crazy ass game? Oh, wait, there's a Pokemon. Pride and Prejudice with Kieran Knightley. Oh, I see, I see. Okay, I think it's down here. Nope, that's not, that's not that one. Okay, well, first we have to go back to the forest. Remember, again, just told us we have to go get him the linking book. So, yeah, that's what he wants so that he can be free from this place. So we got to go back to Jungle Island. Remember, there was another big puzzle in this game that we need to solve. In addition to the color puzzle with the fire marbles, we also have the animal puzzle. So if you guys remember, the animal puzzle was back on the forest island um, with the, in the prisoner, like the prisoner had like the little area that you could get into. Anyway, we gotta go back here. So first we press this button. I shouldn't have done that, you guys. But it looks like the game is really loud. Okay. Here we go. We're back in the forest island. We're gonna go back down. We gotta go basically traverse all the way across. The cutscene was loud. Okay, I thought it was. Yeah, it looks like the game is really loud and I am quiet. Yeah, actually. Maybe it's an actual microphone settings. Maybe the gain is not good on the microphone. Okay, let's see if this is helpful. Um, I might be too loud now. I don't know. Anyway, I'm going to keep watching it. Y'all keep telling me if it's off. But looking at it, it looks like it's right now. What, Queen? Are you also offended by the loud cutscene? Me too. She just gave me this look. Okay, we go back down out the fish mouth. <clears throat> and we have to go, like, all the way the fuck across. So we go to the left, I'm pretty sure. And then we come up here. Yes, yes, yes. And we have to go back to the village area. So we're going to go around this way. Well, we don't got to watch that again. We saw that. Yes, I know. The lookout man is watching me. I always feel like somebody's watching me. Okay. We go back up the stairs. Go into the prison cell. We, we've already watched all these cutscenes, so I'm like skipping some cutscenes. I know I normally wouldn't, but y'all have seen them. You don't care. Okay. Remember, we have swung this to the side, so we have to go back here. Okay. Now we're at the animal puzzle. So remember, we figured out which animals match to which numbers. So we have to do them in the order. So we're looking first for a fish. So fish was island number one. There's our fish. Okay, number two was our beetle. I've got my notes, got my notes right over, over there. Okay, number two is our beetle. So we got our beetle. Number three is our frog. So this is the frog. I know it looks kind of funny, but I promise you this is a frog. <laughs> this is the frog. Um, and number four is the center. Remember the big guys on the rocks. So that's number four. And number five is our big whale man, which is this one right smack dab here in the middle. Okay. Second major puzzle of the game solved. Riven is a game where there are truly only two puzzles and it takes the entire game to solve them. But what's beautiful about these puzzles is you can really believe that the rebels that were against Gen would have this crazy secret code where you had to find all these balls to unlock the right order to and, and know the Denis numbers to be able to know the order of the animals to press down here. And like they kept it sec a secret passage from the, the prison, you know, which is where a lot of them were being taken. Like, so 
this is the magic of Riven. Like, you can really believe that this world, like, exists in this way and that these puzzles are something someone would really create. Um, so yeah. Oh, look. It's the box art cover. Um, box cover art, I mean. Those are words. Or watch this beautiful flyover. Wow. It is. It is a story. Um, they did make some, uh, missed books. If you have enjoyed watching both the first Mist game as well as me playing Riven, I highly recommend going and reading the books. Hey, Cassian, how's it going? I like the idea that a couple puzzles take the whole game rather than consisting of a bunch of smaller ones. I don't think I've seen that before. I literally can't think of another game that does this, but this is also what makes Riven really difficult and like was made it impossible for me to solve it as a child. I couldn't really solve it until adulthood. Okay, so if we turn around... Turn around. There's another little book right here, but oh no, the rebels have found me. Oh, what's happening? Oh, they poisoned me with the frog poison stuff. What the crap? What the heck? I couldn't grab the book for again. Oh darn, I really wanted to do that because I believe I can fix him. Um, I have to try to get the book somewhere. I don't know if they're available in the Netherlands at all. Yeah, I have no idea. They're not, they weren't very popular. So they're not exactly easy to find in the US either. Um, you might, I don't know exactly how you would, you would get them. Okay, we're going up there. Okay, sir. I guess take me there. I was kind of dozing in and out, apparently. Yeah! Yeah, and this game, um, it's very old. It's very old, and, and they have, like, green screen actors and stuff, and um, it looks pretty good for the most part. Tell me they got a Tim Curry cameo, too. I wish. Although, in the third Mist, one of the actors is the same guy that plays uh, Wormtail in, um, not Wormtail, Wormwood? What the heck is that guy's name? The evil-like advisor guy from Lord of the Rings. Worm something. Anyway, it's the same actor, and he's actually excellent in the third game. Okay, so I wake up in this strange... Worm tongue, thank you, thank you. So you wake up in this strange room, and if you wander around and don't do certain things, nothing will happen. So here's what you have to do. You have to come out to this and actually step, click in the window so that you actually look out the window, okay? Um, although I thought a scene was going to trigger. Maybe I have to look out here first. Okay, there we go. So you look out the front, and then you look out the back, and then someone will come and check on you. So yeah, you you see him mostly towards the end of the game. So you might, if you find clips from Ms. Three Exile of him, it might be spoilery. I don't speak that language, ma'am. I appreciate you trying to explain to me, though. Okay. I think she wants me to read those books. Um, okay. So here's what she said. She says, here's the linking book. Um, but you actually should read this journal first. So that's what we're going to do. Hmm? Oh, I guess I made it too quiet. Here we go. You can hear her now. The audio mixing is not very good. Yeah, she's talking, but she's talking in Denise, so you have no idea what she's saying anyway. So he really didn't miss anything. But yeah, she's chatting us up. It's not Twitch. I, the game, the sound mixing in this game is pretty bad. Okay, so we've got more journals to read. So this right here, um, this is a book that looks like you would go to Denis. So y'all, I mean, I don't know if you remember what Denis looks like, but it looks like it would take you to Denis. Um, so what we're gonna do first is we're gonna read Catherine's journal right here. Okay, this is her writings from while she was imprisoned by Gen. 
I linked to Riven a week ago. The smell of the place overwhelmed me moments before I could see anything. With my sight only partially cleared, I stood motionless, peeping ahead through the dim veil which was slowly lifting. There was a moment... There was a moment something and has appeared. I am not very good at reading script. This font is not very legible. I remember breathing slowly and very deeply, tasting the familiar Riven air that is not and not recognizing a thing. I must have been hit with the dart right away. I thought it was an insect bite at first. I'm trying to remember it all, but it's difficult. Maybe because of the drug. There was a voice. A man I did not recognize stood before me. Rivier thought he was wearing Denis dress. Oh, Riven Knight, though he was wearing Denis dress. He seemed to be talking to me. Um, and the poison was already taking effect. A shadow crept in and I fell asleep. Work, I'm going to lurk, but have a good one. Th well, thank you so much for lurking, Cass. I really appreciate that. Um, then there were the many voices, but I understood none of them. Like hundreds of people whispering, I couldn't wake up. No matter. The dream did end, and now to hear with it. It's been so many years. I hadn't realized how much I missed her like a piece of me that I had forgotten. Ah, uh, I'd something. She's beautiful and so full of warmth, but the years have been also left her with a wound which is not there when we were children. I do wish she were more interested, it seems, and then there's this inside of it. I write quickly from my prison. Nella will return your book, which was mostly, which moiety, the moiety, intercepted upon your arrival. After questioning her, I've concluded that it was written by Atris for the very specific purpose. Gen will desire to use it, although he may have suspicions. If you can find my prison, you will still need the combination to release me. Gen keeps it in his office, then I assume we're signed to Atris, and I think I know how it might be done. But don't signal him before I'm released. Okay, so we have to find this... Um, we have to find the the code in Gen's office to get into Catherine's prison and save her. Okay. It's been so many years, I hadn't realized how much I'd missed her. Oh, this is the same page. It seems like I'm um, asking all the questions. It's awkward. No one asks me where I've been or what I've been doing. This hurts, but I understand it. Their beliefs are out of ignorance and oppression. They are a gentle people, but their hearts... But they had their nest destroyed, and now they frantically cling to anything that might serve them. Ugh. But why have they chosen to cling to me? I'm confused. As a child, I've always felt out of place here. I never belonged. They misunderstood me, and I couldn't relate to them. But now I am overwhelmed by an intense feeling that I owe everything to them. And this place, I thought I would never see them again. And yet I'm here. I've been given this second chance, but a second chance at what? Saving them? Um, fulfilling their prophecies? Being their savior? So this is from Catherine's perspective. So Gen told us that um, they see Catherine as a god. That's how he explains it. So this is how she feels. Like she feels she's being pressured by them. The moiety. Atris would want me to determine all that I've learned. And I am at least records. I can at least record some of it. It seems that when Atris and I trapped Gen on Riven many years ago, our efforts were witnessed by most of the inhabitants here. Two of the Rivenese even witnessed the confrontation with Gen at the Fissure, where I linked back to Mist, and where Atris threw himself into the abyss. Of course, they un undoubted something of what they were seeing. Oh, they undoubted much of what they were seeing, but somehow were able to grasp that we had... Um, one, that Gen was no god at all, but only a fetal imposter, a false god, and that we had trapped him here on Riven. I always hoped they would beam this simple truth, but their further conclusions have um, astonished me. Atris has stripped Gen of his power, therefore Atris must be the true god. As a god, he was cho choosing me, the spiritual manifestation of a Rivenese woman to be his wife. I was transcending into deity, um, something lord over Riven forever. So this is what she learns of 
the logic that the moiety have created about her in her absence. Thus, the moiety, as they call themselves, were born a distinct society, sworn enemies of Gen. I did not know of their beliefs regarding Atris and myself until two days ago. Um, I was, for some reason, hesitant to tell me. Oh, Gita was, for some reason, hesitant to tell me. I can't figure out why. I know she doesn't believe these things. Of course, everyone, she, um, something that I be aware of my own God status. So they made no effort to inform me. I only realized it at a recent gathering to which I was invited. I sat at the front of a dimly lit and crowded cave as they told a mythical story of my own life. Sitting something, let me see if there's a transcript of this. Catherine's journal transcript. I'm stumbling over my words too much. Of course, yes, someone has transcribed it. Wonderful, beautiful. Let's read this one. Okay. Of course, everyone assumed I would be aware of my own God's status, so they made no effort to inform me. I only realized it at a recent gathering to which I was invited. I sat at the front of a dimly lit and crowded cave as they told a mythical story of my own life acting out a battle between Atris, myself, and Ghent at the edge of the fissure. The events had been exaggerated into grandiose proportions. It was offensive, but I was unable to stop it. I was unable to break the illusion which their foundation of their hope and purpose, and which has given them courage to band together and rebel against Ghent. Since then, I've learned other doctrines and beliefs that have evolved, the most disturbing of which is the conviction that one day I will return to Riven to free them. Some believe I will overthrow Gen. Others believe I will bring them to paradise. I don't know how to deal with this. I fight myself. I love these people, only my real kindred, but they will not love me as an equal, which hurts me. I would rather be their slave than their master. Over the years, Gen ha as power has become greater and greater. The moiety's numbers have grown and they have become more and more adept at hiding themselves. They now live in a complex network of caves that he has still not discovered. The moiety, for the part, have completely severed their relationship with any Rivenese that choose against joining them, but I hope they've not sacrificed vital limbs in order to remove the cancer. Even Father and Enut are still on the surface of Gen's domain, and I long to see them, but a dimness shrouds Etty's face every time I mention them. Since this break took place, they have interfered with the surface in superficial ways, occasionally sabotaging one of Gen's constructions or stealing food from the villagers. They wear strange masks and costumes during their short forays to the island's surface and take this regalia very seriously, refusing to be seen by anyone outside the moiety unless they are properly attired. They get much pleasure out of the fact that those on the surface are frightened by these costumes, calling them evil spirits or ghosts. Let's get... yeah. It was during one of these expeditions they fortuitously rescued me from one of Gen's guards when I first appeared on the island. Otherwise, I'm sure I would have been delivered to Gen immediately. I've no doubt that he's now searching for me. Of course, I am now aware that I was fooled. Atrus is not here. I was at first devastated at this realization. Now, I'm thankful. He would be in extreme peril here. Also, there is a quiet inner voice, an echoing remnant, that wants him far away. I have just witnessed an age dying. Oh, this is, okay, new section. I have ju was just witnessed an age dying, gasping its last breath. Today, I ventured to the surface to see what has become of the island. I hoped it would not be as bad as the moiety had reported. It was worse. They have become slowly accustomed to its steady decay, but I was devastated. The lips from which the kiss is wrought has fallen words will fall cold breath. The womb from which the cry released has suffered hurt will suffer death. To get to the surface, we had to travel through complex series of doors and passages. Before the last of these doors, they offered me a weapon, which I accepted, and then a mask. I held the mask in my hand for a while, wondering what sort of terror it might invoke in the members of my family who still live on the surface. But I also know I must keep my identity hidden from Gen's ever-vigilant eye, so I accept it as well. Then, together, we swam a short expanse and emerged out of the surface of the ocean under a rocky overhang. The harsh sunlight made my eyes sting, but the fresh, rich air was exhilarating after these past weeks in the dank caves. The two men with me were silent, communicating only with hand signals. The three of us emerged from our hiding place and made our way to the top of the plateau. 
At the edge of a thick and overgrown area of the forest, they stopped, peered through the foliage for a moment, and then turned to me, as if awaiting my command. But I could not respond. In fact, I found it difficult to move. I was smelling, hearing, and breathing my youth. This swept over me in a matter of seconds. But in seconds more, all feeling was gone. There was numbness. We did not stay long on the surface, but it was long enough to see the worst. Riven, which was once one island, has split apart into five distinct pieces. About a half mile apart, four of these have been claimed by Gen for his exclusive domain. Only his ministers and personal militia are allowed to access them. From my vantage point at the edge of the forest, I could see three of these islands. They are stripped of their former beauty and are riddled with Gen's self-absorbed constructions. The moiety rarely visit these closely guarded places. There is another island which I could not see, as it has inevitably crept away into a terrific distance. The moiety are very unclear as to what exists on this island, except for the fact they know it's where the great tree used to exist. The forest is located on the island that the surface dwellers and the moiety still refer to as Riven, but they also refer to the entire world as Riven. This island is where the village is, which has changed dramatically. It is also one of the remaining province of people, though Gen's influence can be seen everywhere. Of course, I know the reason for fracturing the island. The moiety do not. Gen wrote this place, and it will die, as all of Gen's ages eventually die. So you can see her little drawings here of that. I feel nothing today. I am nothing. I live in a cave on a dying world inhabited by people that... They're treating me so strangely. They don't know how to relate to a god. I'm still an outcast here. They whisper amongst themselves, talking of my bravery during the excursion to the surface, how I walked across the island bold and unafraid. They don't know me. Even Eddie is uncomfortable around me. At times, there's no awkwardness, and I am only Katrin to her, but other times, I'm something else. I'm afraid. There's such a gaunt numbness inside me. Today, I don't feel closeness with my people. Neither am I offended by their worship with me. I don't hate Gen. I don't feel anything. This crossed out says, I'm not even sure of. At least Nell is still close. I'm boiling. I am... Gen is making and writing books I wish they had told me sooner. Atra should have realized this would happen. Of course. Gen would have written all of the materials necessary to Denis to the Nini craft of making books into this age and probably every other age he ever wrote. He's attempting to write his way out of here. We did not imprison him. We only delayed him. This age has become his factory and the people his machines, all laboring in the mad pursuit to become a god, to carry on his noble Dini cause. So far, he's not been able to produce a fully functional book. Atrus has never believed in destiny, but I don't know what else to call it. It's too perfect. It's too much of a coincidence. They hang on my every word that they don't understand them. I'm their hope, and now I've returned. I owe this to them. There is no choice. Okay, so we can see this contraption from the very beginning of the game. We didn't have a code to get into here, but we remember this. <clears throat> it's been a long time since my last entry. It's hard to recognize, but I've found the starfisher. It's located on the island which the Rivenese called Alapo, meaning water pool, which was referred to by the moiety as Altawan, meaning pool of stars. Having once allowed Atris to escape this age without leaving an open door behind us, it has since been sealed with a skin of heavy iron. A crude telescope has been mounted over the locked viewpoint, the combination to which was acquired by the moiety before my arrival. That's very convenient, isn't it? Um... In the early days, the moiety seeking escape from Riven briefly pursued the idea of opening the fissure. They discovered a small mechanical stop to prevent the scope from hitting the portal window. Ultimately, however, they decided against opening it. All right, so here we go, you guys. Oh my gosh, thank you so much for following. We do have anonymous followers on here in case you prefer to continue lurking. But if you don't, feel free to say hi in the chat, and um, I'll be more than happy to thank you with your name. <laughs> okay, so we learned how to count in Denis. All right, so let's see what this code is. So this is a five, and this is a two, and a one, and then a four, and then a four. So five, two, one, four, four. Welcome in, la la lu la la. I love that name. Thank you so much for the follow. 
Um, we're playing, we're doing the end of, uh, of Riven today. We love puzzle games. We love uh, chill, cozy games. So puzzles are um, one of the types of games we play a lot on the Thursday streams. Yes, exactly, Koneko. Very convenient. <laughs> okay, here we go. I hate to think what would have happened to them if they had not left it alone. I've instructed them to stay away from it. I'm almost certain that with the decayed state of the islands, opening the fissure now would be disastrous. So, okay. So as far as solving the puzzle, um, those numbers is what you have to get out of the journal. The rest of this we are reading for the story. Okay. I've heard that in the days immediately following Gen's confinement on Riven, he attempted to determine the feasibility of navigating the stars beneath the fissure. For he had seen the mist book fall from Atrus's hands into that very same space. Ah, remember that? We found it. We found it when it fell in there. To this end, he would have people, alleged transgressors of the law, thrown into it so he could observe their fate. The telescope, which still stands there, is one he had built for these callous experiments. It is said they did not die, but what became of them remains a mystery. It appears that the limits of Gen's optics prevent him from learning their fate. The star field beneath the fissure is not as it seems. It is a gentle space, as hospitable to life as a flowing river. This is how Atris explained it after he'd fallen into it. But much more than that, we've never understood and we were never able to include upon its origins. But the visions tell me that it was born out of a will of the maker, perhaps for some greater purpose that we cannot yet understand. I still remember Atris's words from his journal. I realized the moment I fell into the fissure that the book would not be destroyed as I had planned. It continued following into the starry expanse. There must be some greater reason behind it. I neglected to mention earlier, the unique shape of one of the great daggers which appeared during our escape from Ribbon is the very dagger that stands vertically at the end of Alatuan, has been adopted by the moiety as a symbol for their cause. It is a sacred symbol for them. It is a representation of all their doctrine and their representation of me. To deface this symbol is sacrilege. They have their own mythical explanation regarding its sudden origins. I haven't told them I wrote it into the age along with all the other daggers. <laughs> ah, so it is a symbol of you, Catherine. <laughs> it's strange how such a young religion can be so unbending even to their own god. I've tried to dissuade them from the notion that symbols contain so much power. The enemy uses this paranoia against them. They are fearful of Gen's symbol and are terrorized by his symbolic use of the wark. Those are the whale creatures. But they don't want to hear this from me. Perhaps my attempts have even caused some of the younger members of the moiety to doubt that I'm Catherine. My rare encounters with those who say they follow Gen have been discouraging. I have hoped to see some communication with the surface villagers, but they always flee from me. But I have heard news of some of the villagers' beliefs regarding Gen. Soon after we trapped Gen on Riven, he claimed that he was responsible for the daggers, placing them around the island as a reminder of their failure. In the village circles, it is told that this was a punitive act, performed by Gen to mark the beginning of a period of restitution, at the end of which they would have proven their devotion to him, they will be delivered into a new and better existence. I will continue to try to reach them. The door is open. Gen is free. Gen has the ability to create working books. In fact, he has written one age before I arrive, but has kept this accomplishment so well hidden that only his closest ministers are aware. Until now. I'm not sure. Perhaps he's written others. Other news. A few years ago, before the moiety were forced into hiding, one of them managed to steal what appeared to be a test book that Gen had intended to destroy. It has been partially written, but didn't work. They didn't tell me about it until now because they thought it was useless. Back then, none of Gen's books worked. But instead of correcting the problem at its source, he blamed it on the impure wood of Riven's forest and proceeded to engineer a cumbersome mechanical remedy, a complex series of domes to heal his book's inherent flaws. One of the consequences of this crude solution, however, was the domes demanding huge amounts of energy, and the related problems delayed his success for quite some time. Okay, so this is the dome thing from Catherine's perspective. So you can kind of get an idea now why there's a section of forest that's cut down. He was using the wood, but then he stopped. He didn't cut down the whole forest because he thought... Like, oh, this wood is not good. At last, however, he finished his work and was finally able to link to an age, but he kept his success extremely well hidden. However, for some reason, belligerent pride, he's made modifications to the domes, which make it obvious that he's using the dome to breathe life into his half-dead books. Perhaps he means to lure us into using the books in his domes, he can't believe that we would blindly swallow such suicidal bait. But he wouldn't know we have one of his books, the stolen burnt book. There is a possibility of, this is that's what she scratched out. 
the would be bad. True. <laughs> True Koneko. <laughs> but it wasn't. He just didn't know what he was doing. Um, have ha- read the burnt book. Age it describes would be unsuitable as a new home for the moiety, but m- be modified. Mo well, must be modified. I will dream. I have requested a group to solve combination that will open the domes. Once open, we can power the burnt book. I do not think Gen will interfere. He will leave the bait. And then so she's sketching out some ideas here. No, he couldn't. Well, he just he, he just believed he was, you know, it was he was all powerful. It couldn't be him. It couldn't be his writing. You know, it had to be something else. <clears throat> oh, let's catch that Pokemon. I need to buy some more balls. There we go. Oh, I don't even have any Ultra Balls. Okay. Whatever. <clears throat> yeah. No, I get you. I get you. <laughs> okay. I have begun writing the Moiety's Age. Now must acquire a second book from Gen. There's tension. A strain blurs my vision. And nightmares. Nella and Etty stay close. Oh. Thank you. There we go. Now it took. I thought maybe I was out of Ultra Bowls, but I guess not. Okay. Much has happened. Almost everything is prepared. We've stolen another book, but I'm concerned. Gen will miss it. We've also discovered the combinations for entering the domes, but we have not discovered the method for powering them. By powering our burnt book with Gen's domes, we will be able to link to this age, but we'll only have access to the domes for a short amount of time before we're discovered. Therefore, we can only use the domes once. I must find another way to make the books work. The gateway images of Gen's books and our burnt book all seem to share the same sickness. If they're not powered, the images are black. It might be possible to clear this vision with only... We'll write substance into Moiety's age. So remember, we powered the books with the fire marbles. After... Oh no, this paragraph. All is ready. Now all we can do is wait for the word from the moyetir esque who are on the lookout for Gen to power and use the domes. When he does that, we'll have access to one of Gen's domes just long enough. After linking to the age which I've written, I only have to locate the book, window substance, and refine or adapt it. Laying this window over the gateway sh- image should heal the book and make them work. So remember the woman came in, she put that little window thingy over the book. That's what she was doing. This will allow me to use the second stolen book and return to Riven with more of a book window. We will no longer have to rely on Gen's clumsy domes. I laugh at all these plans. I sound like Atris. I'm risking my life, but I have no fear, only anxiety. Perhaps it is the source of my nightmares. The fissure, like a great wound, it opened. It stains the Riven soil with blood. I hold the moiety knife. The voices grow so loud. For their part, the moiety have complete faith that I will accomplish my task and lead them to a better world. It is the fulfillment of their prophecy, but they're also fearful and tense. I don't know what they will think or do if I fail. It's done. It seems too good to be true. I feel like it's all still a dream. We've already evacuated all the moiety to this new age. It's beautiful, and I am pleased. At last, my people will live in safety and comfort. They stand under the bare sky, unafraid and dazzled by their freedom. They're happy. They have named it Tay. There is still much to be done. We have not we are not protected yet. The only way to completely safeguard this place is to destroy the book which links here links to here from Riven. But I don't even know how to bring this up to the Moiety. They'll be extremely reluctant about destroying their only link to Riven. I share this hesitation. I would be cutting off my own connection, but for their sake it must be done. I'm anxious to know if our activities have aroused Gen's suspicions. If so, we must act quickly. Even so, I feel that now we are impregnable. Tomorrow, I'll return to Riven to see Gen's reaction for myself. But tonight, I finally rest. Okay, and that's the end. All right, very long book. Actually, it took longer to read that than I expected. We are going to um, save the game really quickly. Save. I'm going to put you here. Stream three. All right, the reason why we're saving is because I have a fun scene to show you guys. So remember, this is a prison book. We're supposed to trick Gen into going into the prison book. So what happens if we go into the prison book right now? Let's watch. The poor moiety, they so confuse. 
Bye. Yeah, don't touch it or you'll get stuck in here instead. Credits. So that's one ending you can get. <laughs> um, we're not gonna let that ending play out though. It's just it just rolls the credits. We're gonna watch them another time. All right. Where'd my mouse go? Let's close this. All right. We're gonna reload the game. So that's an ending you can get. Um, let's open Steam and let's get Riven playing again. All right, let's see the game. There we go, you guys can see. All right, okay, so you don't wanna do that, otherwise you'll get trapped. <laughs> All right, now let's go back to Riven. Here we go. Okay, so we're back in the animal puzzle room. Um, so we are going to go backtrack all the way to the jungle dome, um, all the way on the other side of the freaking island. So let's make that that run. Um, audio only cutscene. We cannot skip this one. Here we go. Okay. Fastest sprint across the biggest island. Zoom, 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 zoom. Wee! I think we go left. Did I do it right? Yes, I did it right. Okay. Oh, but I didn't hit the switch. Okay. Now all those cutscenes you can skip, but for some reason going up this particular elevator is not an audio only cutscene, but it's not skippable either. Um, like you can skip that, but like, oh no, it did let me skip. There's, there's, maybe it's going down that you can't skip. I don't remember. I thought that was one, but I, maybe it's the going down one that you can't skip. Okay, so we're going back to this book. If we remember from before, um, this is a unique code. Ours is uh, 467 So this would be, 20, 19, 18, 17, um, 13, 7, 6, 4. It's going to be different for every playthrough. All right. Now we can get into the book again. All right. Let's go talk to Gens. Tell him we got his book. Like, sup, friend? Well done. Thanks. I was greatly relieved when I received word that you had recovered the book. I don't quite know how you managed it, but if I may. Thank you. Like, this is suspicious. Mm hmm, super sus. Like, do I touch it? Do I touch it? Do I touch, do I really touch it? <gasps> oh, that's right, Koneko. We gotta get you subbed again. Someone buy Koneko a sub. Perhaps it would be best if you went through first. Okay. I know, you sus. Now you don't have to click it. If you don't click it right there, um, then he will he will just be like, okay, never mind, and you kind of lose the ability to get the best ending. Alright, so he sees that I went in, he's looking, he's like, Well, this guy went in. Maybe it's not a trap.
Touch it, touch it, touch it. You touch it. And I'm back here. Gen is trapped. Oh, yes. Okay. We are going to save the game. Stream four, save, resume. Because now that Gen's trapped, you can get, get a fun cutscene if you swap yourself with him. So let's watch that. I don't know exactly why you released me. But you me either, Gen. Of course, that this must be the end for you. Aww. You can't take the chance that you will change your mind again. It may provide again. You some solace, however, to know that with this act of self-sacrifice, you have secured your place in history. I thought we were buddies. The will be reborn. The lives of millions will be purified. Thanks to you. Ben. Farewell. Ben. Don't do it. He do it. And guess what? Credits. This is another bad ending. Um. But the credits aren't playing. There they go. Okay. Womp womp. All right. We're going to start it again. Uh, let's go back in. Okay. All right. Come on, OBS. Show them the game. OBS says no. There it goes. Okay. All right, you guys can see again. Okay. So those are some fun endings that you can get. <laughs> um, there's some some fun stuff on the table here. You can see it, here's here's a book that he's working on, but it's black. It doesn't do anything. Um, there's some other fun stuff to like look at here. He's got a lot of fun tchotchkes on the table. Um, he's got his little furnace. Here's the cage that you are in. But what we really want to do is go down here. Because remember, Catherine said that he has the um, code to her prison. Um, one fun thing you can interact with is this guy right here. This will play a little uh, a little yeah, imager video. Shima? It's Catherine. Sure, Gen's obsessed. <laughs> Tagamem San Botegan Shem Pasi. Hey. Yeah, no, it's no it's no stream without a little bit of scuff, right? No stream without a little bit of scuff. Alright, so that's fun. Um, but really why we're here is oh, not that. Is this over here. So here's another journal that we can read. Um, I'm going to pull up my transcript. Yeah, this is the one. Yeah. Yeah, it's really good. I mean, this game is beautiful for when it came out. Mist was the same way. Okay, we're going to read this one. I start this latest journal with astounding news. Catherine has returned to the fifth age. Okay, so this is Gen's second journal with some more of what he experienced. Um, and though it sets my teeth on edge to say it, she has also vanished as quickly as she appeared. Stolen from me by the rebels. As my guard tells it, she's linked to the Fisher Plateau cage, as I guessed, when suddenly he was set upon by a band of rebels who darted him and spirited her away. I suspect the truth of the matter was that he was so dumbfounded at actually witnessing someone link in after all this time that he presented an easy target for whichever rebel happened to be their moment. The damnable luck of it. He did get, it, get a good enough look at her, though, to verify that it was indeed Catherine. He also claims that he inspected all of her belongings and found no linking book on her person, a fact which, if true, makes the question of why she returned here at all the more puzzling. While I am sick with frustration at having lost the only query that Cage has ever caught, I am also filled with hope. She may yet provide me with a way back to the Denis. It is true that I have managed, despite overwhelming odds, to break free of the confines of the Fifth Age and resume my mission to save my culture from extinction. 
but I fear that unless I'm able to regain access to the vast resources that lie in the city's ruins, the task of reconstructing the great civilization will be impossible. If Catherine did bring a linking book with her, then I'm halfway there. If not, then she is trapped in the Fifth Age, and I can assume that my emotionally crippled son will soon be along to rescue her. Either way, it's crucial to my plans that I find her soon. Her presence here now forces me to take the rebels more seriously. I should have never permitted them to survive this long. Once again, the Great Wark has demonstrated its usefulness to me. The past week, the villagers have been most difficult to manage. Apparently, they learned of Catherine's arrival, and their fear of this mythic beast has all been has been all that kept them in line. Had I known how truly useful the prestigious creature would be, I would have captured more of them while the local population was still plentiful. Although, to be sure, if the disturbances continue, my current pets will be in no danger of perishing for lack of nourishment. So he's telling you he feed he feeding the warks the people he feeding them people. Um, the search for Catherine continues. I deeply regret my mistake of having ever taught the primitive people anything at all about the books. It seems that with each passing day, I more sorely realized the extent to which they are not ready for that knowledge. Not even the simplified manner in which I'd presented it to them. He's talking about the school he set up. Their minds adapted only to exceptionally menial tasks of village life were incapable of comprehending the art in all of its complexity, and thus were unable to extract the essential underlying principles that are ironically so elegantly simple. Well, you know what, Gen? You can't re-figure out how to write books, so maybe it's not them that's the problem. I'm just saying. <clears throat> it is obvious that much of the discord that exists between us stems from the failure to grasp the full meaning of the information I gave them. If, I'd been if they'd been able to gain the smallest glimpse of the future I'd planned for them, then this conflict would not exist. And you have such colonizer energy, oh my god. The minds of the children are much more malleable. With the proper instruction, they have developed a more appropriate posture towards the culture that gave them their lives. At time, they take to it almost as if they had a bit of Denis blood in them. Given the natives' inborn limitations, however, I am quite careful that none gain the level of understanding that would permit them to sin against their future in the way that Catherine did. How foolish I was to think that she could contain such knowledge responsibly, when it was quite clear that my own son could not. Atris, still he remains one of the greatest disappointments of my life. Yikes. I should have never left him with my mother. By the time I had returned for him, he had already poisoned as to his thoughts of the Denis. Perhaps it was on the only way that she could rationalize the fact that she had been responsible for the collapse of their civilizations. So much destruction, so many great lives lost, the guilt must have been, unbear been unbearable. I do have vague recollections of the love she had for my father and for our world, but ultimately she was an outsider whose ignorance of the Denis became the catalyst for their demise. If I am able to rebuild our culture and in the process correct such crucial weaknesses, then perhaps what she did was ultimately necessary in order for a new era of prosperity might someday come to pass. These last few weeks, I found myself frequently beset by images from the past. As I stood in the schoolroom today, I was reminded of my own childhood. The years I spent in the Bookmakers Guild, father's immense pride at each of my small accomplishments there. He was an important man in the Denis world, but I can't bear to think of him for long. It's too much. I was too young to see such a thing. I've got her. Last night, I received word that Catherine was in the village attempting to persuade the people to join her. I lost two good men in the process, but I would have paid a hundred times that number for such a prize. She's been taken to the prison island, where I've been attempting to gain some insight as to the reason for her presence here. I've had to fight the all but constant impulse to put her in the gallows. She has adopted the most infuriating stance of only answering my questions when she answers them at all in her native tongue, even though she's a poor liar. I am now quite certain that her return to Riven was unintentional, and that she brought no linking book with her. As far as her willingness to share with me the location of the moiety, we shall see. Without their leader, however, they are once again powerless against me. If Catherine coming here was indeed an accident, then Atris is bound to come for her. That's a given. The question I must now consider is how will he do it? Is it likely that his hesitation has been due, at least in part, to this dilemma? One way or another, though, he'll have to bring a linking book to give back to Denis. There's no other way. It's late, and I cannot sleep. I've lost so much of my life. My people, my father, my son, and you, my wife, Keta. 
You are the only true kindness I've ever known. Which, watching you flicker there in the imager, I sometimes wonder if you are real. If I could restore your life with my pen, I would do so in an instant and leave the rest of the world to their own wretched fate. I was waiting for this passage, you guys. Okay, so now you know Yen was going to marry Catherine, but she ran away with his son, Atrus. Ouch. Damn these savages. I be, would be well advised to leave them all in the fifth age and begin again with a clean sheet of paper. A stranger has arrived on Riven with a linking book to Denis, and once again my useless mission was overtaken by the rebels from what little I could decipher from his muddled explanation. It apparently occurred sometime this morning. Hey, that's me. They're talking about me. <laughs> the cage has been damaged, but it is no matter. Everything I need is here now. Atris is certainly behind this. Yet, how could he be so foolish as to send someone here with a linking book? Such blatancy is unlike him. Could it be that he has had a change of heart after all these years and is finally letting his poor old father go? No, he's only after one thing. Perhaps he should find her. For now, I need only to wait and observe. Okay. This device here, this is our code. So we're going to listen. You know, it's a missed game, so we gotta have another sound puzzle. They love their sound puzzles. Okay. Got like a twist sound, and it ended with a ding. Let's see. Listen again. That's like this twist, and then tap, tap. Twist, tap, 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 ding. Okay. All right, we've written it down. All right, we can go back up. Oh, thank you. Chirp, tick, 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 ding. That's a good way to say it, too. Okay. Now we can go back here, and we're looking for the prison book. Um this. Yeah. We gotta open the cage so we can get in and look at the books. Okay, so we've known that this prison island exists for a while. Remember when we were on that um, one island with the, the, it showed like the five different islands and the bubbles, and there was an island that was only one block. This one. We never actually got a chance to go to it. We are finally going to go to it. Here we go. Let's go visit Catherine on Prison Island. Beautiful flyover. I love the flyovers. Absolutely love them. Okay, here we go. Here we come, Catherine. We come to save you. Okay, so it's this. One, two, three. Ding. There we go. We're in. I think that the music box puzzle is randomized as well. Up, up, up. Okay, here we are. It's Catherine! We're here for you. We have to move quickly. Ken's people may already know what's happening. Once we're back with the moiety, we'll have time to regroup. Okay. Can I see the book? You did it. We 
we're all free. You're captured again. I did it. But there's still his followers. I'm not sure what they'll do once they realize he's gone. I'll have to get the villagers to safety as soon as possible. You go back to the Temple Island and reopen the fissure. I know it's risky, but it's the only way to signal Atrus. I'll try to make it back there as soon as I can, but don't wait for me. Don't forget, the portal combination's in my journal. Good luck. Okay. So she broke it so we can't get up to the prison again. So it's only that movie. You can't go up to that scene another time. control yet? Oh, there we go. Okay, so we're gonna go back down. Another one of these. We gotta tap, tap, tap. Okay, last one. Do the code again. So we have 17, 13, 7, and 6, 4. There we go. Alright. Oh, this scene's not skippable. There we go. Now it's skipped. Okay. We've seen these. We can just go. All right. So now that we're back in here, we want to go to Temple Island, um, which is, I think, the L-shaped one. Not that one. This one? it on spin around okay I think it I think it might be this one. turn around and see yes this one okay so we're going back on Temple Island and we have to go back to where we started the game take me up elevator all right last time around the catwalk we can do our little turn on the catwalk. Come back down. Okay, we're back in the beetle room. Back out here. Okay. If you remember, the very beginning of the game where we were trapped here, there's the big dagger. There's the lever that he broke. Okay. We can finally solve the telescope. <laughs> finally. Okay. So, um, it was 52144. So you can see there's five buttons here. All right, we have to pull out the stopper first. Where is the stopper? This guy. Come on. There we go. We pull out the stopper and then we go five, two, one, four, four. <laughs> Did I do it? I didn't do it. Let's try again. Five, two, one, four, four. There we go. I had to flip that switch. Okay. Still doing something wrong. I guess it's not got the glass there. I'm just gonna go all the way back up. Maybe I didn't kill right. Okay, let's push it back. Get back up. Oops. I press escape too many times. Okay, so we pulled out the stopper. We flipped this to make it go down. Where in Catherine's journal was the number?
Oh, here we go. Okay. I thought I learned to count. Let's find out. Yeah, five, two, one. Yeah, that's five, two, one, four, four. Right? Must be another button somewhere that I'm not pushing. Okay, we pulled out the stopper. No, we don't want you to go down yet. Like something. Still can't do anything with that. Let's see. Google Gamer Go! What button am I missing? it not opening. Reddit, you're not being very helpful. But they're numbered in order from left to right. Okay. Telescope's all the way up. Maybe I need to leave the stopper in and then do the code. I feel like I'm missing a button. That wasn't it. Yes, we are finishing Riven. I'm on the very last part, but I'm missing a click, and I cannot figure out what the heck click I am missing. Okay, the telescope is all the way up. Yes. I need to open this hatch. I have the code. But it's not opening. We're gonna save. Supposed to be able to click on the handle according to this and it's not working. Look 
in her journal again. Yeah, five, two, one, four, four. Is still out. You're supposed to be able to click the handle and it open. You click on the lock. What lock? You mean the stopper guy? Yeah, the stopper is open. Welcome back, by the way. <laughs> uh, yeah, okay, stopper's open. Telescope is all the way up. It can't go up any higher. The code, little lock thing below the button. This guy? can't really click on that very well, but I'm trying to. Nothing happens. Is this what you mean? This guy right here? Yeah, nothing happens when I click on that. Okay, let's do five, two, one, four, four. Yeah, nothing happens when I click on that. I don't know what to do other than reload my save. Because according to Google Gamer, I'm supposed to be able to click this, which is what I thought after I clicked the buttons, and it's not working. Yeah, we're going to load a game. Let's load this game. Okay, let's make sure Catherine's journal still says 52144. Okay. 52144, okay. <clears throat> you know the code. You can just wait. Where's the switch? I don't know. I'm not sure exactly, but we're gonna just skip cutscenes and um try again. I'm just gonna speed through. This. Hopefully it will let me skip the Catherine cutscene. Ah, oh, the code must have changed. Dumb. That was the right code. All right. So, not that island. Thank you. Stressful. It's not that stressful. I mean, you literally can't die. All right. Let's try this again. Can I see the telescope co code again? Welcome, by the way, Neurovac. Yes, we absolutely can look at the telescope code again. Let me go um, back and do my turn on the catwalk, and then we'll look at the code again. Oh. The room is rotated. That's interesting. Where it wasn't before. We must have gone a different way. But anyway, just rotate it. Oh, this is audio only cutscene. Oh! Theme version, why? Oh my gosh. I'm a 
must have walked a different way when we were coming back here before. The liminal space felt it. Welcome in, Armor Shoes, by the way. Oh my gosh, Riven's bringing so many fun new peeps to the stream. I'm so happy to see you guys. You should um, stick around. We play a lot of fun, like, chill games like this. Okay, so here we go. It's all the way up. I'm push it up. The button. Yeah, I don't go up no more. Okay, we're gonna pull out the stopper. Okay. Oh, wait, y'all wanted to look at the code one more time. Flippy, flippy, flippy. If this is just like, I just don't know how to count in Denis, then, um, oh my gosh, your name is Riven. Welcome, Riven868. Yeah, so one, two, five, four, four, right? Like anybody that knows Denis numbers, I see y'all's names in the chat. I know some of y'all know how to count in Denis. This is right, right? One, or sorry, five, one, two, four, four. Okay. Five, one, two, four, four. Handle. I don't understand. I don't understand. Koneko, what am I doing wrong? Go to school? What's the code? What am I doing? Oh my god. Did you know that I'm dyslexic in Denis too? I just learned this. It's still not working. No, wait. Five, two, no, motherfucker. Five, two, five, four, four, five, two, five, four, four. Five, two, five, four, four. Candle, I'm dumb. Someone clip that shit. <sighs> anyway, it's open now. I knew how to do this, I just can't count or read. <laughs> no one's surprised. I'm not surprised. Someone please clip that shit. Oh my god, Koneko. Here we go. I love you so much. Hang on. I got something for you, friend. I got something for you. There we go. That's just for you, it's babe. It's Karen Terry gifted a tier one sub to Lucky Congo. Thank you. That's for you, babe. Um, we'll pick out a pin. We'll we'll pull out a pin, random pin for you in just a second. Thank you, Jane. <laughs> thank you, thank you, thank you. Okay. Anyway, <laughs> now we can put the telescope down and break the glass and open the fissure. Oh shit. What is happening? Starry expanse. Oh no. We're breaking everything. It is destroyed. Uh oh. Where's Catherine? I freed her, I promise. I don't understand. You've captured Gin, but I did, I'm amazing. There's no time left. The age is collapsing. I've got to get back before it's too late.
no. I'm not allowed. Into the starry expanse once again. Bye. Bye, Riven. Bye, Gen. I tried. I tried to fix you, sir. Where is Catherine? Ooh, mysterious. So much work. Gen is at last defeated, but the price of this defeat is dear. The people of Riven must try to hang on to a world which is dying. And I am sentenced to the futile task of nursing Riven's fatal wounds. Of Catherine, I will never know her fate. We're gonna have to reload and free her because I restarted. I never went back and freed her. Oops. Okay, well, let's go see that ending. Uh, let's restart. Glad we have lots of saves. Yeah, because we restarted, I didn't um, didn't free her properly. Okay, so let's load from here. I know. I'm a bitch. Okay. I'm going to go write down the correct code now. Since you guys so graciously taught me how to count. <laughs> oh my fucking god. <clears throat> yeah, you're not going to miss anything, Kitty. Like, writing down the right numbers now. There we go. <laughs> oh my gosh, I'm a terrible, horrible human being. Okay. Anyways. Um, we already know the thing. Okay, we gotta go to Prison Island. Okay. Uh, where's Prison Island? Here it is. Okay. Let's go free Catherine. We already saw the cutscene, but let's actually go free her and then we'll see the ending cutscene. Where you actually get the true ending. Koneko, you can put that clip everywhere. You can put it wherever your heart desires. We've already watched all of this. Can I skip it? Yes, I can skip it. Yep, and she cut it. Okay, fabulous. Let's actually go see the good ending where we free our friend, Catherine. Um, the whole fucking point of this game. Oh, maybe I should actually watch and click when it's old instead of just clicking randomly. There we go. That one, 17, 13, 7, 6, 4. There we go. All right, so now we want to go to the main island. This guy. Okay, back to the telescope. Replaying this game again after playing the new remade Mist, I'm now thinking things like. Um, you know, I really do believe there would not be a good way to make Riven 3D. You would have to, like, literally change how the world looked. Um, because if you couldn't just click like this, my fucking god, it would take forever. It would take forever to beat it. Okay, so. Five. Two. Five. Four. Four. I can count. <laughs> appropriate kitty appropriate okay let's put it down do you know about the Riven remake yes I am aware of um, a fan remake of Riven where they're trying to do this and I know that last time I checked on it they were having some struggles 
um, with certain aspects. But I've not played it, and I, if they finished it, I, I didn't know. So I might have to go check it out again. Like, tell me if they did. Okay. Let's do it again right this time. And, um, take a look at that. They were working on it for so long, I kind of stopped following. Hey, Atris. I'm doing it right this time. Good green screen run in there, time? sir. Where's Catherine? Where's the book? Atris! I don't have... <gasps> Atris! Catherine! Yeah, but the OTP's together again. Villagers are safely in the Rebel Age. I thank you. As do I. You've accomplished more than I could have hoped for. You're welcome. Give me back my life. Don't lose and your book again, Atris. For all of us. He always drop in his books places, and I gotta come save them. Ribbon. Bye. Bye. Wow! Oh, beautiful. All the stars. Now I understand. Endings and beginnings are within the fissure. That riven cleft of stars that acts as both a wall and a bridge. And though I am unable to understand how, the very flow of stars that brought my misbook into worthy hands, I am sure, served as a safe passage home for my friend. The Age of Riven is closed forever, but the people of Riven are free. Yay. Now I am at rest. Understand that in books and ages and life, the ending can never truly be written. Credits. So a couple of fun things that you might not have realized. Um, the guy who plays Atris is uh, the guy who made this game. Um, and um, another kind of interesting cast factoid is that the lady that plays Catherine is different than the person who voices Catherine. So the voice is literally just like lip syncing over her lines. <laughs> and if you know that, you can kind of notice. But if you don't know, it, she does a pretty good job, I think. You can see Rand Miller and Robin Miller all over here. That's the brothers that made the Myst games. Um, and as you remember, each of them also played um, uh, Cirrus and Akinar from uh, the first game. Yes! Fun little facts. Fun little facts. We did it! We did it! We did it! Hooray! Y'all remember Broderbund? That's who, who made these games, or the like the uh, publishing company that uh, that had them work on it, sponsored it. Yeah, there's all kinds of YouTube videos with like um, interviews with um, with the Millers and things talking about Mist and stuff. Especially a bunch of them got published around when they uh, just released the remake um, of uh, of Mist that came out recently. Thank you to all of these people who make this awesome game that I could share with everybody.
So we have a lot of um, new friends here in chat tonight, so I'd like to let you know also that uh, we focus a lot on good stories here, so if that interests you, you should definitely drop a follow. Um, we play games that uh, that are really focused either on the story or that I can share something with you guys that I think makes a good story or things of that nature. So that's our Thursday show, Artistic License. And then on our Saturday show, I stream on Saturdays as well. We do a lot of like a, a media analysis podcast. That's most of what we're doing. Um, we also do a community days. So that's also where we do our like playing with viewers types of streams. Um, Stardew Valley is the main game we play for that. We play others. <laughs> that's right, Jane. Um, for me, that sounds the last few months because I started thinking about a Miss Kingdom Hearts crossover. Oh my god! But they're so similar. You like travel to worlds and stuff. Um, I know a little, know too little about Mist at the minute. I don't have time to fully work it out the time being, but the idea exists. But Koneko, here's the great thing: is there's really not a lot of Mist canon. Like you, you already know from watching these streams the two main games. I mean, you can look at the other games and play them and get some more lore information, but I promise you, it's not that important. Um, and there's only three books. Like, it's really not that much. Honestly, you could read, um, you can probably just even read the first two books, and I don't even think you need to read Book of Tiana, and you would have more than enough of the Mist canon. Like, you already know enough about the world building just from watching these two games. Okay, so that's it. That's Riven. All right. 807. Wow, that took longer than I thought it would, but there was a lot of reading in that last section. Okay, since um, we, we did that gift sub for Koneko, um, I got to get a pin. We got to get a pin to add to the pin curtain. All right. What are we going to pull out of the pin box? But yeah, Koneko, I think Mist and, uh, and Kingdom Hearts are, are both, um, they could easily be spiritually connected. You know what I mean? Okay, here we go. I had to mix them up good. Oh, okay. This is Mickey Mouse 1928 design. This is the pin. Here, let me try to block my face. You can see it. Very cool, right? Yes. So anytime we get a sub, we'll add a pin to the pin curtain. I've just got so many. So, new pin on the pin curtain. All right, you guys. I hope Brie has not been too whiny in here. <gasps> me too, Kitty, me too. That's what most of this box is, is pins from Disney. There are others, though, um, as well from other trips, but it is mostly Disney. So, I hope Brie has not been too whiny. I'm just going to pick her up and let her say hi to the stream for a second. So some of you guys know, not all of them. Rhea is not doing too well. Poor baby. But I just wanted to get her on camera for a little bit. She got diagnosed um, last Friday at her doctor's appointment with dementia. And, you know, her mobility has gone way down. She doesn't walk anymore. Yeah, she's still beautiful and fluffy. Her coat looks still really good. But not tomorrow, but the next Friday, she's got an appointment with um, uh, at they'll, they'll come to the house, a vet that specializes in hospice and end of life care and euthanasia and all of those things. And they're going to do an evaluation to see if they think she's a candidate for hospice. My vet doesn't think she is. So we'll see. But I wanted to get her on camera because we just don't know because she's really not doing too good anymore. So you know how that goes. And I just, since it's the end of the stream, and we ain't got time to beat a whole boss in Final Fantasy at this point. I'm going to get a little footage of her. She is still very beautiful. You hear that, Vivi? You're beautiful. She has no idea what's going on. She doesn't know her name anymore and stuff like that. So, yeah. That's why that's happening. Okay. Other question for you guys. After seeing Mist and Riven, these are the two games that really are the main, like, story of of this 
Um, there is like a third and fourth game and stuff. Um, I've never played like the fourth game and, and beyond. There was like kind of an MMO-ish game too, but I have played the third game. It's pretty fun. But story-wise, it's not as connected as the first and second game. But if y'all are interested, like for aesthetic reasons, we could put it on the list to play it. So let me know if y'all are interested. Um, but story-wise, it's like, it's not as impactful as these first two. The story is really in the first and the second one. Ooh, Cleffa. More mist is better. Okay. I will I will consider when we might could do that. Definitely the third one is back to a more like normal amount of difficulty the way that the first miss game was. Which why are you loading all funky? There we go. Um it's not as crazy. Hard as Riven. <laughs> all right. Let's find somebody to rage you guys. Y'all, I need to make more stream friends because like so many of my people that I, we used to raid all the time just don't stream anymore. They just don't. Is anybody streaming Mist? I'm sure nobody else is streaming Riven right now. But is anyone streaming Mist? No, no one's streaming Mist right now. Let's see. Let's see if anybody's streaming Final Fantasy X. I'm sure some people are streaming Final Fantasy X. Yeah, of course. <laughs> of course. Okay, let's see. We've got a couple people that are towards the end of the game. Let's see. What about this person? Keanu Leaves is their name. And they have a Keanu Reeves icon. Let's see if they've got... um. Let's see if they've got a uh, cam. You gotta get past the ad. Put your boots on. That's right. Oh, uh, Google's back to thinking that I speak Spanish. Does this ever happen to you guys? Every once in a while, I'll start getting Spanish ads again, and like Google really thinks I speak Spanish. Let me unmute this guy for a second. Yeah, I got love for Keanu too, but this guy has no cam. And he's not talking. Okay. Looks like the Miss books may have been archived on the Internet Archive. Oh, good. Oh, good. That's a good. That's good. Oh, this one has a lot of viewers. This one's got to be a good stream. Why oh, they don't got no cam either. Oh, but at least they're talking. I don't know. I want to find a good stream for you guys. Here we go. This person's name is Sailor Garnet. I can see that they have a cam. Borrows the Firefly's power oh, and they are their paranormal okay. performance. I saw them talk a little just a second ago, but now Machin is talking. Okay, we're going to raid them. We're going to raid Sailor Garnet. There we go. All right, you guys, thank you so much for watching. Um, we are taking a little break. Landon's not going to be able to be with us next week. So we're actually streaming some Sims 2 on Inner Stage Window. So if you want to see the next chapter of The Legacy with Landon and her sugar baby, um, they're adopting. They're adopting very late in life. <laughs> That's what we're going to be doing on Saturday. Uh, and next time on Artistic License, we are going to be doing some uh, more Final Fantasy X. We're going to go back to fighting optional bosses in Final Fantasy X. Uh, here's all my socials. I recommend that you go and subscribe to my YouTube channel if you want to watch my VODs. That's where they all go. Uh, follow my Twitter for the latest updates. If you want to make sure you're getting all up to date on the um, accurate uh, notifications, you want to get in my Discord because I actually control the notifications there. All right, here we go. Let's go ahead and raid Sailor Garnet. Bye, guys. See you later. And don't forget, of course, as always, to make it a great day.